Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, new AMA website to help small UAS operators. Flight school is sued following a fatal accident. Name that bomber contest moves forward. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 12, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Academy of Model Aeronautics is making a new resource available to all recreational small UAS operators. They say that if you've recently purchased a small drone and are flying for recreational and hobby purposes, this website will help you understand what to know before you fly. Bill Pritchard, AMA's Education Director, said, The AMA's SUAS program website is an important tool for keeping our fun and educational hobby safe for everyone. We will share up-to-date information as the AMA, in agreement with the FAA, continues to establish appropriate safety guidelines for emergent technologies like drones and novel facets of aero modeling activity. In order to promote safety, all of this information is available to the general public for free on our website. The father of a student pilot has sued the flight school where he was working towards a private pilot certificate over an accident in which the student was fatally injured. Television station WAGA reports that the lawsuit was filed last Friday. The father of the student pilot said that the school was negligent because it forgot to refuel the Piper Tomahawk before Joseph Hughes second solo flight last October. According to the report, Hughes had about 13 hours in his logbook when the accident occurred. He was on his second solo flight, performing practice takeoffs and landings when the fuel was exhausted, leading to the fatal accident. According to the lawsuit, the plane had not been refueled after it had been flown for nearly five hours several days prior to the accident. Issues not discussed in the report are whether or not the school or the student pre-flight at the aircraft prior to the flight or whether the fuel gauges in the cockpit were operating correctly. After the break, the B-21 bomber gets closer to being named. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. Or if you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at errol-news.net. Earlier this year, we reported that a contest was being held to select a name for the Air Force's new B-21 bomber. It's now been reported that the naming submissions concluded on May 5th, and the contest now moves to the next phase. According to reports, Active Guard, Reserve, and Civilian Airmen, along with their dependents, submitted more than 4,600 entries in response to the contest. Air Force Secretary Deborah Lee James said, We've received an overwhelming number of nominations, which to me is a testament to how invested our airmen are in the future of their Air Force. Air Force Global Strike Command leadership narrowed the list down to about 15 names. James and the Air Force Chief of Staff will select the winner in the coming months, and the name of the 21st Century Bomber is scheduled to be announced during the Air Force Association Conference in September. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind the Airborne Unlimited show. <music> 
Spring is upon us and summer is just around the corner. And a beautiful way to spend time by the lake is to do it with your airplane. Anyone in aviation who has ever watched a seaplane take off or land knows that there's something just a little bit magical about it. Whether you've long ago taken the plunge and are actively pursuing waterborne aviation, or you're a seaplane aficionado who simply loves the adventure and freedom of water flight, the Seaplane Pilots Association invites you to the most exciting realm of aviation. The primary mission of the Seaplane Pilots Association is advocacy. They are the voice of the seaplane community and represent the interest of seaplane enthusiasts on the federal, state, and local levels. It includes ensuring fairness and equality for seaplanes to share public waterways with all the other user groups. Other key elements of their mission include safety, education, and environmental stewardship. If you're not already a seaplane pilot and would like to know more about the magic of seaplane flying, check out the Seaplane Pilot Association website. After these messages, Pratt & Whitney certifies another pure power engine. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Now Bree is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Christopher. The FAA has certified Pratt & Whitney's Pure Power PW1400G JM engine to power the Russian-built Ikrut MC-21 aircraft. With this milestone, Pratt & Whitney says this is a huge step forward, and they now have three certified pure-powered geared turbofan engine variants. Today marks the fifth anniversary of the first human-powered helicopter flight. Pilot Judith Wexler flew the human-powered helicopter Gamera 1, 4.2 seconds in College Park, Maryland. The total weight of this quad-rotor helicopter was just about 210 pounds, including the pilot. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin concerning the potential for cracks and corrosion in the stabilizer hinge brackets and tail cone reinforcement brackets on Cessna 180 and 185 airplanes. The bulletin applies to aircraft that are equipped with floats or skis. A British man's kite flying outing was interrupted recently when a Bristol police helicopter pilot landed to tell him he was flying it too high. Kite height is limited to about 240 feet, and this kite was spotted at about 1,000 feet above the ground. ANN has learned that E. Allen Engelhart passed away earlier this month. A retired United Airlines pilot, he was also the chairman of the board of the Chicago Executive Airport and served as the regional representative for the Retired United Pilots Association. That's the trip around the patch. Back to you, Christopher. Aero Electric Aircraft Corporation, which is developing the Solar Electric Sun Flyer General Aviation Flight Trainer, rolled out its proof of concept prototype yesterday morning, May 11th, at the Denver Jet Center East on the Centennial Airport. ANN videographer Nathan Cremasino was there as Aero Electric Aircraft founder and CEO George Bai presented the new airplane to the public and press. We're unveiling the Sunflyer Solar Electric Flight Training Aircraft. And as you can see behind me here, it's a beautiful aircraft, very, very sleek, but fundamental in the disruptive technology that's being applied here is it's all electric. Electric propulsion allows the airplane to be aerodynamically much, much more efficient, lightweight composite structure, of course, but the key with electric propulsion is that we're getting our costs down to about one dollar per flight hour of energy used. So by 
adding the efficiency, lowering the cost, we think we're going to revitalize interest in the aviation industry that we all love so much. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, always have an out.